Jumwe Yusuf, we are live in Abuja. We begin with security reports and to reach the Nigerian Air Force Capability Gap in Special Forces and Combat Search and Rescue Operations. 203 troops have been injected into the existing force. Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Sadiq Abubakar, announced this at the graduation of the combined team at the Nigerian Air Force Regiment Training Center, Air Force Base Bauchi. The first correspondent is Mad Musa details. Marksmanship drill, a vital skill for all military personnel. These are troops of the Nigerian Air Force Special Forces, one of the most fear fighting formations, trained to attack with speed, precision, and superior tactics. These forces are products of a 13 week intensive theoretical and practical training for special forces and combat search and rescue, with emphasis on force projection, protection, and base defense. This training is to upscale the troops' capacity to effectively operate in different difficult terrain and weather conditions. They are expected to provide situation awareness for air crew to reduce collateral damage, enhance the success and safety of air operations. We have about 300 of these forces in Binwe State, another 200 in Zamfara State that are fighting side by side with ground troops in order to ensure the security of our country. Their performance has proven that enhancing the capacity and capability of our personnel is the best way of ensuring the attainment of our operational goals and objectives. The command has trained over 1,200 personnel by conducting seven special forces course, two special forces instructors course, and three combat search and rescue course. 203 out of more than 300 personnel enlisted for the course 7 and 3 special forces and combat and such, as well as rescue training, successfully graduated. From the Nigerian Air Force Base in Bokshi, Ismail Musa, AT News. The Association of Licensed Private Security Practitioners is suing for compulsory ICT training for members as well as amendment of existing private guard companies decree and act to accommodate the current security dynamics. The resolutions are part of the 11-point communique issued at the end of the NSCDC and the Association of Licensed Private Security Practitioners of Nigeria Retreat. Justin Etim report. Statistics from the United Nations indicates that the ratio of the police to the population in Nigeria is 187 to 1,000 people. It is on this premise that security experts say it is obvious that the police cannot single-handedly provide needed security, especially in the wake of heightened insecurity in contemporary times, thus making the job of private security guards vital to the security architecture of the country. For the private security sector to take its pride of place in the nation's security architecture. It is the yearning of practitioners that personnel be subjected to consistent training and psychological evaluation to ensure that members are fit to carry firearms. We resolve that the unified training to be organized by our regulators would be something regular and it will be sustained. The Department of the Guard and Security Agency will trust us more. They work with us. Before you work as a security guard, very soon you must have an ID, a certification showing that you have gone through training in an accredited training institution. To complement official security agencies in crime management, the Ministry of Interior is making concerted efforts to establish a training and certification institution for all categories of private security institutions in the country. We are working with the 
SCDC to ensure that some of those recommendations and some of those policy initiatives by the Honorable Minister are effectively implemented. Other stakeholders you for standardization, remuneration, and improved working conditions for private security guards. The private security has come to place to augment what the government agencies are doing. There was presentation of awards to practitioners who have contributed immensely to the improvements of security in the country. In Calabar, Justina Etam, NTA News. Thank you, Justina. Now, if the world make the right decisions now, it can meet humanitarian needs, reset development pathways, accelerate implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals on a safe and healthy planet. United Nations Deputy Secretary General Amina Mohammed said this at the informal meeting of the special session of the General Assembly in response to COVID-19 pandemic. Adebola Brooks and Sunday reports. COVID-19 climate change, conflicts, and humanitarian needs are some of the challenges confronting the planet Earth at the moment. Her Excellency Amina Mohamed to make a statement. Nigeria's Amina Mohamed, who is the United Nations Deputy Scribe, said the people and the planet must come first in the UN's immediate response to the pandemic. The decisions taken over the next 12 months will have impact for decades to come. It is essential that they be geared towards reducing poverty and inequality, realizing the rights of all women and girls, and transitioning to a green economy that provides decent work for all. We will strengthen our efforts to mobilize greater resources for countries and people in greatest need, based on the policy options that have emerged from the initiative on financing for development in the era of COVID-19 and beyond. The meeting is to assist countries implement social protection policies. Adebola, Brooklyn Sunday, NTA News. To electoral matters now, since the return of democracy in 1999, state independent electoral commissions have been responsible for the conduct of periodic election into local government councils. Now, the electoral umpires are meeting to review challenges and ways of improving on the system and entrench best democratic values that will guarantee the people's expectations. That Sykes the creation of the 1999 Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Section 197, as amended, and not a product of callous and blind statements. The Center of Excellence is our first port of call on Nationwide today, and Owl is our guide. Hello, Owl. The standard bearer of All Progressives Congress, APC, for the Lagos East Senatorial by-election, Tokumbo Abiru, has been declared winner by the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC. The former bank executive pulled 89,204 votes to defeat Babatunde Badamosi of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, who scored 11,257 votes. Michael Olale reports. A breakdown of the results shows that a total number of 1,261,673 voters registered for the election across the five local government areas within the senatorial district in which 104,894 voters were accredited. From the 104,405 total vote cast, the candidate of the All Progressives Congress, APC, got about 80% and was therefore declared winner. Agents signed 
copies of the result sheet, while a copy was served to the APC as evidence of victory. This actually has shown us that APC is on ground in Lagos East and will continue to provide dividend of democracy. The election, which was contested among 12 political parties, finally put to rest months of intensive preparations to fill the vacant seat of the Lagos East Senatorial District in the National Assembly following the demise of Bayo Oshinowo. In Lagos, Michael Ale, NT News. Professional competence and collaboration with the state governments have been identified as key for the effective handling of Hajj operations for Nigerian pilgrims. The Chairman of the National Hajj Commission of Nigeria, NACOM, Zikru Lahi Kunli Hassan, who made this known during a courtesy visit to Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawulu at the Lagos House Marina revealed that the Commission has introduced a Hajj scheme. Nusa Usula tells us more. Chairman of NACOM, Kunli Hassan, explained that the commission had come up with a novel idea known as Hajj Saving Scheme to make Hajj affordable for intending pilgrims so that they can save enough money to participate in the holy pilgrimage. The chairman added that the initiative will also help governments to focus more on logistics rather than spending huge resources to sponsor people to Hajj for holy pilgrimage. Nigerian delegation to Saudi Arabia the fifth largest in the entire world. We are the fifth largest contingent based on allocation. We are actually 95,000. We are larger than any, any Arab countries. We are larger than Iran. We are larger than Turkey. And those are countries who have a very long history of Muslim. Governor Sonwulu, who stressed the need for involvement of youth in Hajj operations, assured the leadership that Lagos State will continue to ensure seamless Hajj operations. We shall ensure that we do a pre-Hajj visit, which ensures you know, that they go and make proper and adequate preparation for the pilgrims. That this has been our strategy, this has been you know, um, what we do, and I'm not surprised if uh, the commissioner and his team are doing the same. That the governor also assured them of adequate preparation during the Hajj in Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NTA News. And now let's talk gender-based violence. With concerted efforts by relevant agencies, organizations, and individuals on scaling up awareness on the dangers of gender gender-based violence, rape cases will not only reduce, but can be discouraged. Annie Daniels reports that it was the view of women rights advocates and caregivers at a walk in Lagos to discourage rape. The walk which commenced at Fatum Street, Sabo Yaba, had women and men from various fields of endeavor with placards connoting the essence of the world. Firstly, this is a young lady that has been physically violated. She has probably physical injuries that we need to treat. She's emotionally affected. She's going to suffer signs of depression, possibly anxiety. She may have flashbacks. She starts to have fear of those around her because, of course, she has trust issues. If these psychosocial issues are not attended to, she may even have suicidal ideations. The global United Nations 16 days of activism against gender-based violence these women's rights advocates say points to the inhuman nature of rape and should not be allowed to persist. If we're saying um, women contribute to the issue of rape maybe because of how they are dressed, which is the um, commonly held opinion in the public, the truth is, what would you say about the baby who got raped, who got molested? Is it a pampas that's used to demand? If a person does not consent to your interest in them, what it implies is that um, you don't have to force anyone to rape. So if to have sex with them, anyone who does that is abusing the person's privilege and violating the sexual rights that the person has. The work is organized by Women Against Rape Foundation and the advice victims of rape to avail themselves the opportunity provided by the foundation to live healthy and become better citizens again. In Lagos, Annie Daniels, NTA News. You're watching NTA Nationwide. Time now for a break. The news will be back shortly. A scorecard like no other. Government has put in place measures and initiatives. Principal
particularly targeted at youths, women, and the most vulnerable groups in our society. These included broad plan to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty in the next 10 years, the creation of 75 billion Naira National Youth Investment Fund to provide opportunities for the youths and the micro, small, and medium enterprises survivor fund, through which government is a paying three month salaries of the staff of 100,000 micro, small, and medium enterprises, b paying for the registration of 250,000 businesses at the Corporate Affairs Commission, c giving a grant of 30,000 naira to 100,000 artists and guaranteeing market for the product of traders. These are in addition to many other initiatives such as farmer money, trader money, market money, and power, and tech, and end agro. These and more in spite of a recession and global pandemic. Social media as a channel of communication is inherently harmless. It becomes harmful and damaging when used without discretion and thoughtfulness. Bad social media users spread rumors and fake news without verification. But good social media users stop, reflect, and verify information before sharing it. Be a good social media user. Stop the spread of fake news. Verify the authenticity of your source and use social media responsibly for a better Nigeria. This message is brought to you by the Nigerian Salvation Authority, NTA, in collaboration with the National Orientation Agency. I'm a carpenter. I've been doing this for more than 80 years. And I said that plantain. Nakei Kimami Shekara. I've been selling my tomatoes for about 10 years now, and I do it for a better Nigeria. And I do it for a better Nigeria. And you can see how we're doing our small little work to make a Nigeria great. As you can see, I'm a technician and I'm doing it to help myself and to help my generation. I don't know my business. I'm a better Nigeria. This message is from the National Orientation Agency. The Council of Our Fathers. My advice to these young people is please uh, do not take us back to those harrowing days. You probably do not know what it is. Nigerian youths, let's build our nation together. Thanks for rejoining us more on electoral matters. The Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, has declared Stephen Adi Odi of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, declared winner of the December 5th Cross River North senatorial election. Stephen Odi of the PDP scored 129,207 votes, while Joe Odi Agi of the APC came second with 19,165 votes. Nine political parties contested in the by-elections. And for more on electoral matters, let's join Frama in Jaws. Hello, Frama. Thank you, Jumai, and welcome to Jaws. Professor Nora Ladi Dadut of the All Progressive Congress, APC, has emerged winner of the Plateau South Senatorial District by election, beating her close contender, George Deka, of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, with a landslide victory at the polls. Returning officer of election announced the result at Shandam Local Government Secretariat Coalition Center. Kim Gott's reports. 
10 political parties participated in the 5th December 2020 Plateau South Senatorial District by election to fill the vacuum created following the demise of late Senator Ignatius Lonjan. Professor Nora Ladi Dadut of the APC secured a total of 83,151 votes to beat her close rival, Judge Dyker of the PDP, who scored 78,838 votes. <laughs> Although some irregularities were recorded in some polling units, the election was generally peaceful with the heavy presence of security personnel at all polling centers. It was also observed in compliance with COVID-19 protocol across the six local government areas of the senatorial district. In just King Gods, NT News. The the State Command of the Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps has inaugurated a unit known as Agro Rangers in the local government area to mediate between farmers in terms of conflict. The commandant urged the people to embrace the scheme as it is meant to provide security in the community. Yodik and Ladi reports. Following the incessant clashes between headers and farmers, the then Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Rural Development initiated the program to mediate between farmers and headers in terms of conflict, kidnapping, cattle harassment, and criminal activities in the country. The commandant of the Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps said they will collaborate with the Ministry of Agriculture, local government authority, traditional leaders, and key players to ensure a peaceful atmosphere where both farmers and headers go about the lawful activities without molestation. We have to make sure they don't clash. They don't keep up. Representative of the Governor Jose of Nangwai, Chairman Pocos Local Government Council, Yusuf Machen, representative of the Pocos Traditional Council, and that of the headers and farmers, expressed satisfaction with the scheme. <laughs> For God to give the herders and the farmers peace so that everybody should live in peace. We the herders, we need peace and we are doing all our best to make sure that peace then in Bokos local government. Highlight of the inauguration was the sign of peace act titled Peace Agreement and the Enhancement of the Economy by both parties and the handover of the Agro Rangers personnel, the local government chairman. The team was at the dairy farm to inspect the facilities where the agro rangers will be stationed to carry out their responsibility with them. From Bogos local government area of Plateau State, Yildiki and Yangdala, the ATA News. In a bid towards ensuring business sustainability under a COVID-19 driven economy, the Industrial Training Fund brought together key players in the industrialization process of the country to chart a new course and adopt models that will help drive the mandate in repositioning micro, small and medium enterprises. India and the Abidjan reports. The Stakeholders Interactive Forum by the Industrial Training Fund provides a platform for the fund to interact with critical players in industrialization of the country towards finding grounds for sustainable relationships and economic development. This year, the forum focused on sustaining the micro, small and medium enterprises a panacea to COVID-19 survival, a situation that made the fund to come up with over 10 intervention programs in various sectors of the economy that trained thousands of youths and women to bridge skills gap in the country. advantage of the forum, the fund brought a business administration expert who emphasized the need for business owners to re-evaluate and re-strategize for better output and productivity in the COVID-19 era and beyond. We were able to IMAC, uh, identify about four important areas. One of it is that every macro enterprise, you know, we need to redefine itself. This forum help us to see how we improve 
they are hopeful that ahead of the year 2021, the knowledge gain will help sustain businesses, thereby tackle issues of unemployment in the country, in jobs, in the Nyan and the Abagyang NTNUs. And that's our contribution from Joss. Nationwide continues with Jumai in Abuja. Thank you, Farmer. Now, as part of measures to promote efficient administration of fiscal incentives, the Federal Ministry of Finance and National Planning, in collaboration with the Nigerian Customs Service, organized a one day seminar on the automation of import duty exemption certificate processing IDEC. Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning, and Department urged industry players to key into the new development and ease the process of doing business in the country. Robinson Deputy has the details. Till March 2020, the process of granting import duty exception certificate, IDEG, was done manually with its attendant consequences on time management and on the human interference. With the expansion in the scope of request, the need to drive the process with modern technology became expedient, especially as government grants over 341 billion worth of waivers from August 2017 to December 2019. The new automated import duty exception certificate will encourage inclusive and sustainable growth of the economy as well as conservation of foreign exchange. Standardize and simplify the processes for all with us to eliminate bottlenecks and subjectivity, thereby guaranteeing ease of doing business and ultimately making Nigeria. The importation of equipment and machineries in the mining, gas exploration and energy are among sectors to enjoy the incentives. The incentives are terminal and sectors of limited capacity for high modular impact on the overall economy. Because of the fiscal in incentives that have been instituted by government, these companies have come on stream and have generated employment. Applications for IDEC are now processed through the domain name www.idec.gov.ng in Portacot, Robinson, Delateide, NTA News. The chairman, Progressive Governors Forum, and the governor of KB State, Abubakar Atikuba Agudu, has called on state governors to leverage on agriculture as easiest way to cushion the effects of economic recession being experienced in the country. The forum chairman was speaking during a visit to Jigawa State where he inaugurated a 42.5 kilometers road project constructed by the state government. Mohamed Musa Askira completes the report. Governor Atiku Bagudu says agriculture is the way out for more states in the country considering the 20 federal allocation to states triggered by the second leg of economic recession Nigeria is experiencing. He observed that the current economic challenge is a global phenomenon arising from the COVID-19 pandemic, advising governments to look inward with a view to supplement the state's revenue drive. What is amazing is what he has been able to achieve with the limited resources. Because in the last six years, the world economy has been in a turbulence, which has been worsened by this year's coronavirus pandemic, coupled with the flooding that devastated many states, including Jigawa, and then the consequence of the NSAS rioting, unfortunate rioting, which also slowed down economic activity. Said the 42.5 kilometer road project linking Kevin Hausa and Kiawa local governments areas at the cost of 5.3 billion naira to boost movements of agricultural produce along the axis. <laughs> This is the second time Governor Muhammad Badru Abubakar is inviting APC governors across the country for the inauguration of projects in Jigawa in less than three months. From Dute, Muhammad Musa Skira, NT News. For more on NT Nationwide, Kemi is standing by in Ibadan. Hello, Kemi. Jumai and a warm welcome to Ibadan. 
The federal government has called on Nigerians to continue to support government efforts to enhance socio-economic development in the country. The Minister of Interior, Raoul Farag Bashala, made the call in Ijebu Jesha during the third session of the Synod of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion in the Ijesha North Diocese of Shu State. Tokwe Alabi has details. The Minister of Interior, Ogbeni Raoul Farag Bashala, believes the development of Nigeria cannot be left alone in the hands of the government which provides leadership, but the people would have to take responsibility for their own development to move the nation forward. We should all focus on anything that is possible to improve ourselves and therefore contribute to the development of our community, our states, and our nation. Earlier, the minister was conferred with the prestigious Ecumenical and Episcopal Award of the Jesha North Diocese of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. From Ijebu Jesha, Tope Alabi, NTA News. And soil is an important part of the earth which supports human life and productivity. Over the years, however, the management of soil has been facing challenges resulting in declining global food supplies as well as environmental hazards. This report examines the impact of effective soil management on life. Soil is made up of living and non-living matters that interact to improve soil nutrients, support crop growth, and provide food for life. Several human and natural activities such as erosion, poor farming practices, and bush burning often deplete soil nutrients. Hence, the observance of World Soil Day to continue to raise awareness on proactive means of improving soil health and managing its resources. So far, we've been able to make impact by letting people know about what soil stands for, how it can be managed and proper, uh, properly used. So let people know that we don't take soil for granted. We have to conserve it. Even if possible, we have to rehabilitate it. Theme for this year, keep soil alive, protect biodiversity, focus attention on healthy ecosystem and human well-being. The organism in the soil, they are what make up the soil heads. When we have healthy soil, that is when we have our healthy crops and healthy human as well. So there's need to protect them from being carried away. United Nations in year 2013 declared December 5 World Soil Day following a unanimous adoption by the Food and Agriculture Organization. It from Ibado nationwide continues with Jumai in Abuja. Good afternoon. Thank you, Kemi. It was an outpouring of encounium for the former President Court of Appeal Justice Umaru Abdullahi at Tukulukim in his honor when members of the legal community guided in Abuja to celebrate one of Nigeria's finest legal officers. Chief Justice of Nigeria, Ibrahim Tanku Mohammed said Justice Umaru impacted the legal profession in most remarkable ways. Judiciary correspondent Vera Chumwa has details. The colloquium was in recognition of the many contributions of an outstanding jurist and former president, Court of Appeal, as he turned 81. The Chief Justice of Nigeria was represented by Justice Boderus Vivos, while Justice Chukuma represented President, Court of Appeal. The combined enormous managerial capacity we ensure efficient management of men and materials will be needed to serve. In his time, Lordship exuded a collegiate manner on common humility and accessibility, which won him and communes and positive commentary both within and beyond. Others describe Justice Abudlai Umaru as an epitome of good governance. Yes, it's excellence that the right people should be in the right. Uh, the worst corruption is not uh, bribery, but it's putting people that are incompetent uh, in position of authority. A leader, we're talking about someone who is inclusive in the way he manages an organization. And Justice Umaru Abudlai uh, was such a person. Just 
Justice Omari said, an efficient justice delivery system remains the hallmark of judiciary. People should get justice done as quickly as possible. That nobody should suffer unnecessarily when there is law in this country. There is constitutional provisions. The laws are not supposed to be punitive. Former NBA president Abubakar Mahmoud SN gave a keynote address in Abuja, Viera, Chumba, NTN News. Now, language is obviously a vital tool. Not only is it a means of communication, communicating thoughts and ideas, but it also forges friendships, cultural ties, and economic relationships. It is in light of this that the Nigerian National Association of the Deaf is pushing for the recognition of sign language in Nigeria. How many reports? They can hear verbal communication while some can hear partially, but they intend to make sure that their statement is heard by everybody. And that statement is the need for the recognition of sign language in Nigeria due to the over 9 million deaf community in the country. Celebrating the 2020 International Day for the Persons with Disability, Nigeria National Association of the Deaf commended President Buhari for the recognition given to the disabled persons in the country while asking for the harmonization of their sign languages towards building and developing one for the country. Sign language is one of the more important languages that need to be recognized in Nigeria. This community, once we don't recognize sign language, we are leaving them behind. And the most important way here to build back a better Nigeria is to recognize the sign language. So, sign language is our primary language, our right, our pride, and our identity. We need the support of everyone, including the government and the corporate world to help advance and promote our rights at all levels. A novelty football match was played between the Deaf Football Association All-Timers and its youth team, which ended 3 nil in favor of the All-Timers. Haman Jabani, NTN News. The Nigerian Television Authority has again expressed willingness to support programs that will create awareness about the plight of the aged in Nigeria. This was when Pan-African Foundation for Aged Citizens visited the organization in Abuja. Lydia Sampson reports. Still a young man, Arebi Salayemi developed a strong passion for the plight of the aged after what he called a life-transforming encounter with an old vulnerable man five years ago, prompting the establishment of the Pan-African Foundation for the Aged, a non-profit organization. Something can be done. Like though it is a kind of Herculean task, but not until someone moves, others will not follow. It is the desire to change this narrative that necessitated the visit 20 to solicit the support to reach more people with this message of hope for the aged. The Director General of NTA, represented by the Executive Director of Special Duties, Lawal Umaglalu, says they are at the right place. And uh, I want to assure you on behalf of the Director General and organization at large, we are going to give you the full cooperation and support to see that you succeed in your projects. Omar Lalu thumped up the foundation for building a bridge that will link up the aged and the youth. In Abuja, Lydia Samson, NTA News. Let's join Nora in Sokoto for more in Nationwide. Hello. And welcome to Sokoto. Failure of governments to involve citizens in the formulation of policies and programs leads to poverty's effective planning and budgeting, which poses serious challenges to implementation. This came to the fore at a one day town hall meeting presided over by Governor Amin Waziri Tambul in Sokoto. A lot of Abdullah reports. The town hall meeting was organized by the Sokoto State Ministry for Budget and Economic Planning as part of measures aimed at ensuring inclusive budgetary preparation for the 2021 financial year in the state. The meeting had in attendance community members, NGOs, CSOs, CBS, youth and women groups and others. This type of forum, which offers opportunity for the citizens to actively participate in the annual budget preparation, is part of the initiatives of Tambor's administration since inception. The major object of this consultative meeting is to hear the views of the participants in relation to their respective areas of challenges 
of development for integration into the 2021 physical budget. During the meeting, issues of critical human interest were raised, extensively discussed, and recommendations presented by participants. The recommendations when included and implemented in the 2021 financial year will provide infrastructural development and meet many critical socio-economic needs of the people of the state. I assure you that as a responsible government, we shall go back and incorporate your useful contributions and also fine-tune the budget when necessary to accommodate invaluable inputs. The meeting also had in attendance the representatives of the people living with disability in the state. In Sakwatu, Dalatu Abdullahi, NTA News. San Paolo State Government has received a donation of food items and personal protective equipment from Victim Support Fund for own distribution to IDPs and vulnerable people across the state. The intervention received by the Chairman of the State Tax Force on COVID-19 is a question of the effect of the pandemic on the most vulnerable groups. Halir Muhammad Omar reports. The items which form part of the third phase of the COVID-19 intervention provided by the Victims of Fund was designed to cover the most vulnerable groups in the Federal Capital Territory and some seven states in the northwest and north central zones of the country. Zamfara being one of the benefiting states in the northwest received items worth over 100 million naira, comprising 10 kilograms each of 5,272 bags of rice, beans and maize as well as two kilograms of salt and four liters of vegetable oil. Other donated items include hand sanitizers, surgical face masks, reusable face masks, goggles, gloves, and boots. The items were handed over to the Zamfara State Government by the chairperson of the Victim Support Fund Tax Force on COVID-19, Mrs. Toyesi Akinyele. I believe that uh, by, by far that would go a very long way to question the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic on the economic survival and the you know, shuffles that citizens and the government have suffered since the beginning of the pandemic. Zamfara State has zero index of COVID-19, I assure you that we are going to distribute the item to the target vulnerable people. The chairman of the State Tax Force on COVID-19, who doubles as the Speaker of the State House of Assembly, had shortly after receiving the donation flagged off its distribution to some few beneficiaries. While the Zamfara State Government is built to handle 50% of the food items, local civil society organizations are to distribute the remaining 50% directly to IDPs and vulnerable people in Gusau, Halir Muhammad Umar, NTA News. And that is it from here. Nationwide continues in Abuja after these messages. And youths are about the greatest assets the country has at the moment. It is therefore not surprising that the administration of President Mamad Wari is strategically responding to the yearnings of the youth through multiple projects and programs. Youth entrepreneurship support, yes, by Bank of Industry, the youth investment fund by the CDN, and several other conditional cash transfer programs. Recruitment of 774,000 social workers, majority of whom are youths, and so many other projects that are beneficial to youths directly or indirectly. If the administration can do all this, definitely with a degree of pay and time, it can achieve more. Nigerian youths must come together to say no to terrorism, no to vandalism, and no to all disruptive tendencies. Hashtag youth for greater Nigeria. Pacifying the youths, unifying the nation. International is with you in your living room, office, everywhere and anywhere. We provide the company you desire in terms of balanced and up-to-date news, programs and the best of entertainment. Tune in to the TV channel 251, Go TV channel 91, Freeview UK channel 264, or you can download uk. app for iOS or Android, it's at 901 degree east. You can also see us on Facebook and YouTube for quality content on the go. NTA International, Africa's window to the world. Life can be very eventful. We cure it even when we don't know what. Our 
human nature makes us like and we post lots of information. Some are unverified, inciting anger and hate. Sometimes innocently, other times the urge to break it first. This, in most cases, has caused destruction in many nations. brings to you news and happenings seven days a week. News at 10 a.m. News update at 11 and 1 p.m. News desk at 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. And let's evening news at 11 p.m. Follow us on any of our platforms and keep abreast of events and current affairs within and outside our shores. We are on DSTV channel 419, Bo TV channel 46, Star Times channel 101, and Free TV channel 703. Join us. And welcome back. Information and Culture Minister Laya Mohammed has expressed surprise as less attention is being paid to the barbaric and gruesome murder of security agencies by hoodlums during the NSAS protests that turned violent. Anthony Fossen has the details. The Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed said it is worrisome that everyone remained fixated on what he called the fake massacre at Lekki Tollgate with only few paying attention to the way and manner police and soldiers were killed. In particular, policemen were hacked up in the most gruesome manner that caused into question the sanity of their killers. Yet, these security agents were treated as subhuman. Human rights organizations all but ignore the fact that six soldiers and 37 policemen were killed. Some of them dismembered and cannibalized. The media report of the killings was perfunctory at best. According to the quantum of damage the nation's security agencies suffered, the minister noted that eight medium security custodial centers in Edo, Lagos, Abia, Delta, Ondo and Ebony were attacked with 1,957 inmates, most of them dangerous criminals, set free. Added to that is a steal of 100 AK-47 rifles from different police stations. With this number of rifles in the hands of hoodlums, Lama Ahmed wondered how safe are the citizens. You would understand the gravity of the situation. The specter of hoodlums armed with AK-47 roaming the streets and other roads will send jitters down the spine. Now this is haunting all of us. Wittingly or unwittingly, we have succeeded in scaring policemen of their needs. Today, many of them are even afraid to wear uniforms. And the result has not been really pleasant in terms of security of life and property. To this end, he called on all Nigerians to see the provision of security as a collective responsibility of all. In Lagos, Anthony Fosson, NTA News. Three members of the proscribed indigenous people of Biafra IPOP, allegedly involved in the bombing of the Christian Universal Church International in Port Harcourt have been paraded by the River State Police Command. River State Commissioner of Police Joseph Mukan. Joseph Mukan said the command is on the trail of the major kingpin. Robinson Derechidi reports. Was a worrisome development on the 29th November 2020, around 1 a.m., when a dynamite was detonated at the Christian Universal Church International, a church founded by the father of River State Governor Yuson Wiki. Although no life was lost, a portion of the church building was shattered. The quick intervention of the vigilante at the area led to the arrest of three suspects at the scene and handed over to the police. The suspects are 37-year-old Progress Owen the job from Eche River State, 23-year-old Apollo Victor from Ebony State, and 37-year-old John Okori from Abia State. 
They claimed that they were six in number. But they had it However, they made confessional statements that they are members of the proscribed IPOP. The suspects confessed to the crime. I just received the call that you come. So that I have never involved in any mission before. That if I did not involve in this one, when the Afra is restored, I will not have any position. They told us that when the Afra comes, that we have a good position. It was just to destroy the property, and the reason why it was done in the night is so that nobody will die in the incident. Investigation is still ongoing to track others on the run and arrange them in the court of law. In Portacourt, Robinson, Deratayde, NTA News. For the latest on COVID-19 in Nigeria, the Nigerian Center for Disease Control, NCDC, has announced 310 new cases of COVID-19 in 11 states and the FCT, bringing the total number of confirmed cases to 68,937 in the country. Of these 310 new infections, the FCT recorded 120. Lagos, 86, Kaduna, 26, Katsina, 20, Rivers, 19, Oyo, 7, Benue, Edo, Jigawa, and Ogun have five each, while Bayelsa and Kano confirm two new cases each. On cases per state chart, Lagos maintains the lead with 23,746 cases. The FCT follows with 7,229 cases, while Plateau is next with 3,910 cases. 64,650 recovered patients have been discharged with 1,180 deaths on record. Crystal Palace won 5-1 at West Bromwich Albion in EPL Sunday. For other reports, over to Amanzi Marcos on Sports Update. When the Republic lost by a lone goal to Niger with Togo and Burkina Faso ending their match on a one-all draw at the Waffles.